In this lesson, we are going to be learning how to use images in our websites. So this is lesson nine. Adding images can make websites a lot more fun, but it also means that we'll need to be extra careful about making sure that we are safe and responsible with how we use them. So for your warm-up journal, I want you to think about these things and answer them. In your journal, think of some guidelines we should keep in mind when using images. How can we make sure that we are still, one, safe, and two, respecting the rights of others? So pause the video here so you can write this down in your journal, and then whenever you're done, you can come back to the video and continue. Our question of the day is how can we add images on our websites while making sure we respect everyone's rights? So there is no activity guide for this. You're just going to be on code.org. Okay. And so before we move to code.org, a couple of things I want to go over. The same way we learned how to add how to link a style sheet to our website is a very similar way to how we are going to add images to our website. So you have three different parts of an image tag. The first part is the actual image tag, the IMG. The second part is the image file name, the source. And that's what SRC stands for. It stands for source. Where is our website going to find this picture to show to people. And then the alt is an image description. Alt stands for alternate. It is text that will be used if the file cannot be found. And so if you're if there's something wrong with your code and you have alt my dog and for some reason your picture doesn't show up, it will show the words my dog and the little image icon. And that way we know that it's supposed to be a picture of a dog. Uh, but for some reason, that picture is not showing up. So let's look at Code Studio level one, and we can do that one together. Okay. Now, don't forget, we have instructions up here. Okay. They don't all show up automatically, and so you will want to make sure that you are scrolling down so that you can see everything that is in the instructions section. Okay, so images. A dog versus cat web page has been started for you. The dog image has already been added to the uh, to the below web page. So look at the code that made the dog image appear. Use an image tag to add the cat.jpg image to the page below the cat heading. All right, so let's use our inspector. This is the image. This is the code. All right, so if we're going to add similar code to our page for the cat image, there are a couple of things you can do. You could copy the code from the dog picture and then just replace all of the dog stuff with the cat stuff, or you can type it out. Um, if you're not good at typing, it might be, you know, it really doesn't matter because either way you're going to have to type stuff and that's why typing is important. Okay. IMG SRC equals, it will give you some options that you already have over here. Okay. You can type it or you can click it. If you click it, it's going to be spelled correctly. If you type it, you have the chance of creating a typo and then it not working. So alt equals, and then we're going to say cat. I don't know what the, what the picture is of. I guess we could look. Okay, cat staring into space. Oh, look, you could also just click on the picture and then copy the HTML tag. Mm, that's nice. Okay, cat staring off into space. All right, 
Now, why do I have this error here? Well, I was supposed to have another closing arrow for that image tag and I didn't have it. So anytime you see pink, I, I would say like, you know, not pink flag, but I mean, not red flag, but pink flag. Okay. So make sure you don't have any pink in your code. And then look, it's here. Okay. So let's say that I spelled it wrong. This is what it would look like if the picture didn't show up for whatever reason. Cat staring off into space. That's what I put right here. Now we know why it didn't work because I just titled this file name .jpg, but really it's .jpeg. And so spelling matters. All right. So once you get done with that, make sure you click finish, move on to the next level and do bubbles two and three, and then come back, pause, pause this video so that you can come back and we can continue. So we're looking at bubble four, okay? Well, you know what? Before, before we move on to bubble four, I wanna look at bubble two with you. Okay, so bubble two. When using someone else's image, you should give credit to the original creator. This is also called attribution. The easiest way to do this is to add text below the image that identifies the creator and the website it came from. That's this one right here, okay? It wants you to add that. And because of like the license that is being used it's found the images found at pixabay it was uploaded by the user alexa's photos who used a free for commercial use no attribution required license okay because of the type of license used you are not legally required to include an attribution but it is a good habit to go ahead and get into for when you are developing websites because you don't want to get into a situation where you were supposed to include attribution or credit of some sort and then have to deal with the legal repercussions. For example, BarkBox um, is a monthly subscription box for dogs and um, I think they have a cat option too, but they used somebody's video without their permission and removed the watermark that the creator put on there and they s tried selling it off as pretty much their video and they didn't add, they didn't attribute it or anything and now they're going to have to deal with the legal repercussions of that. So always give credit where credit is due. Okay, now finish through bubble three and then let's talk about bubble four. So bubble four, rename the images. All right, give each image a better name following the rules. Scroll down to see a helpful list of animal names and attributions for the photos. Let's go look at bubble four. Okay, so it's important for images to have good names, ones that are easy to understand and use characters that are good for links this project's image names have some problems okay so for each image you have to fix the name according to the following rules you cannot have these special characters in an image name make sure the name has a specific meaning that you that helps you know what the image is okay um, this is just good practice in general any type of file that you create any folder you create they need to have meaningful names because if you have an assignment called, you know, Bears Beats Battlestar Galactica, and you don't remember that you called it that, but you go to submit it and you can't find it anywhere because it has this ridiculous name, then, I mean, nobody wants to deal with that. Okay, so just avoid it. It's, it's a bad practice. So just avoid it altogether. You can use 
dashes or underscores instead of spaces. You cannot have a space in a file name. That doesn't work out well. Um, and I know whenever we are titling a Google Doc or some other type of Google document, we do add spaces, but um, Google, Google likes to be a little bit different. So choose your favorite image and add it to the web page below. Don't forget the attribution. Okay, so all you're going to do is rename these. Okay, this is ridiculous, right? So rename, get rid of all the extra R's. Easy, right? Paratype of a Pedro. I don't, I cannot, I cannot right now. Okay, this okay we are not 11 all right and if you are 11 years old taking this class you're not writing like this okay so let's not let's fix that this I have no idea what this would be okay so fix that it gives you some ideas gives you the name all right Connie Bush frog all right rename it Instead of a space, you can put a dash, or if you hold down the shift key and press the dash key, it gives you the underscore. So you can choose how to redo that. And then whenever you get done, you can, um, or pause the video here, and then whenever you get done, we can move on. All right, level five. So there are, let's look at level five. On level five, you are going to add an image of your own. So you have to make sure that the image is a Creative Commons image and that it is an image that you can share. Okay, so I'm not sure what all the school district has blocked. So let's just do the Google search the way that we did it in the last lesson and we are looking for a different type of pet so I am going to search for a pygmy bunny rabbit okay oh wow that's cute so I'm going to go to images, and then once I get here, I'm going to go to tools, usage rights, creative commons licenses. Oh my gosh, this, I want one. I want one. This is so cute. Okay, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to call it dwarf bunny. All right. Um, now, I could have gone with everything else now before I leave before I leave okay I need to get the copyright information okay so what is it says free photo and when I click license details this is what pops up copyright only dedication based on so it's just a basic CC okay public domain certification. All right, so now whenever I go back here, I'm going to click the add image. I'm going to upload the file and I'm gonna choose dwarf bunny. That's what I named it. Okay, and then I'm going to use the image tag and add the attribution information. But one thing that you can see, dogs, cats, okay, so it's more than dogs and cats now. So I'm going to change it up to where it makes sense because it doesn't make sense to see dogs versus cats and then see a dwarf bunny at the very end. So dogs versus cats versus bunnies, okay. And then I'm going to add, see here is where in that last one I should have added my um, copyright 
information, but I did not. So now I'm going to create another H H3 tag. So that way we're we're being consistent, okay? And then I'm going to do the image src equals dwarf bunny alt equals amazingly cute dwarf bunny. Okay, now I need to close it. It's a self the image tag is a self-closing tag, which means it doesn't have this whole other part that closes it. All right. So now I need to give the Creative Commons information. Okay, and this is how they do it. So I am going to say it's coming from hip OPX. And it is a public domain certification. All right, so hip OPX. I'm pretty sure I'm already spelling that. And I'm going to say public domain. Okay, so we're using the alt and we're using the image and we're being consistent. Besides the fact that this is a lot larger than these two, but that's okay. All right. And so that's how you do that one. And I want you to practice doing this again on bubble six. You're going to choose one of these. And I can see which one you choose. All right. So make sure that you actually choose one. If you click finish without choosing one, yes. Uh, no, actually it didn't change anything. All right, bubble seven is an assessment bubble. You can click the rubric to see how I will be grading it. And okay, and so that takes care. Pick one of these for bubble six and then continue with the assessment on level seven and then pick a challenge for level eight. And then for your final uh, journal for this lesson. It's a three, two, one. So what are three ways you can use images to make your site better? What are two challenges in adding images on a website? And what is one way you can respect people's rights when using images? And I'll go ahead and give you that last one. The answer is by including the copyright license and attributing the creator of the image when you use it and making sure you have permission. All right, so that's kind of three ways you can respect people's rights, but all together, when you do those three things, you are respecting people's rights. So how can we add images on our websites while making sure we respect everyone's rights? I hope you can answer that by the point of this lesson. If you cannot, you probably should rewatch this or just watch it. Because if you can't answer this question at this point, you likely did not watch this at all. So thank you for coming to my TED Talk.